Think about the last presentation you sat through, maybe one that wasn't so great. The bright fluorescent lights, monotone voices, the endless stream of dry, lifeless data. Let's say you heard that 100,000 people across the U.S. don't get the food and water they need each week. It's a harsh statistic, but it's distant. It doesn't touch your reality. What if instead you had heard about the Husted family, a young family of four, both working blue collar jobs, their daughters attending the local school across the road from your home. And every week, despite their best efforts, they still fall short. Four nights a week, dinner doesn't happen. The fridge is always close to empty. The parents pretend they aren't hungry so their daughters can eat the last few slices of bread. And the same thing is happening in 100,000 US homes every single night. Now, when you hear that, do you just picture another PowerPoint slide? Or are you standing in the Husted's kitchen, watching them try to make a meal out of nothing or imagining them seeking out a food bank? That is the power of data storytelling. It pulls us in. It takes us somewhere else and it makes us feel something, not just random numbers. I'm going to show you how to tell data stories that close deals and motivate your team and influence thousands at a keynote speech. After decades of research, our company published a book called Data Story, an unbelievable resource to anyone who wants to create lasting impact with their data. There's a link to it in the description. But today, we're giving you a shortcut a cheat sheet with the key insights we've learned summed up in four main principles. The first is to present meaningful data is to understand all the gritty little details of how it came to be. Let's say you're a product manager and you're trying to get a time tracker added to the calendar app that your team is working on. You could tell the CTO and the development team that there's a poll out there that says 60% of users would appreciate this feature. 60% doesn't tell them much. Instead of relying solely on the numbers, you reach out to users and ask why this feature matters to them. And that's when you uncover the real story. You find out that many users desperately need it to track their work hours, whether it's to justify their time and performance reviews or to provide proof to clients so they actually get paid. Maybe you hear about Sanjay, a dedicated user who just had his first performance review as a junior architect. His boss doubted his logged work hours and because he had no concrete record, he lost his shot at a promotion. And now, instead of just presenting a statistic, you have a compelling story. It's not just 60% of users want this. It's Sanjay, who with a better time tracker could prove his hours, get promoted, and finally start building magnificent skyscrapers. And even if you don't mention Sanjay or another user, you have the rich context to explain how important the problem is that your new feature would solve. This story is a plot line. It wouldn't have existed without you reaching out to the people behind the numbers. At the same time, you should also dig deeper into who you're presenting to. If you know your audience is environmentally conscious, don't just talk about Sanjay building skyscrapers, paint the picture of him designing the city's first carbon neutral high rise, complete with solar panels and vertical gardens. Understanding data though, is only half the battle. To make an impact, you need to frame it in a way that truly resonates with the people you're speaking to. Once you've gathered all the behind the scenes information, the next step is to shape your data into a big idea. This consists of two parts, a recommendation of what you believe needs to happen next and an explanation of what's at stake. Let's say you're an HR manager trying to convince leadership to invest in better retention programs. There are a couple of ways this could play out. Scenario one, you tell them that 43 employees out of your 1,000 person company have left voluntarily this year and that replacing each one is costing the company thousands of dollars. Leadership nods, useful information, doesn't feel urgent. Scenario two, instead you frame it as a big idea, a clear recommendation backed by what's at stake. We need to invest in stronger retention programs to prevent costly turnover because each lost employee costs $10,000 in recruitment, onboarding, and lost productivity. One step farther, you might investigate the impact of $430,000 in cost on your profit margin. Like that's the equivalent of 10 new annual customer contracts. Now, instead of an abstract cost, you've painted a vivid picture of both the problem and the solution. Data doesn't exist in a vacuum, so don't present it that way. Form your big idea, make it personal, and show why it matters. As you may have noticed in the stories we've explored, every strong narrative has two key players, the hero and the adversary. The hero is the central figure of your story, the one experiencing the challenge or the transformation. The adversary is the force standing in their way, creating conflict. This could be an external obstacle, like a competitor or a failing system, or something more abstract, like 
outdated technology. It's this tension between the hero and the adversary that makes your story compelling. If your listeners don't have a clear image of these players, your data-driven story won't have the emotional weight it needs. Let's put this into the action. Imagine you're part of the marketing team and you want to convince your manager to increase your pay-per-click or PPC advertising budget. You've analyzed your latest data and discovered that all 10 of your most recent clients came directly from PPC campaigns. So to strengthen your case, you dig deeper. You reach out to these clients and ask them about their journey. Where were they before they found your company? What problem are they facing? And why did they choose your business? Through these conversations, you uncover a pattern. Three of them, all mid-sized e-commerce brands based in New York, struggled with low website traffic and inconsistent sales before clicking on your ad. Once they engaged with your company, they saw immediate results, with revenue increasing by an average of 30% in their first three months. Now, instead of simply presenting dry statistics, you structure your pitch as a story. Your hero Those three e-commerce brands are fighting to grow their businesses. Your adversary, their lack of website traffic, the obstacle holding them back. And your pay-per-click strategy, that's the solution that helped them overcome the adversary and succeed. If you had just thrown out a data point, PPC brought in 10 new clients, that wouldn't have been nearly as compelling. But by framing your argument around real players with real stakes, your audience isn't just hearing numbers anymore. They're seeing a struggle, a challenge, and ultimately victory. Now that you understand the data, the context, and you know how to identify the players, it's time to shape it into a compelling story. The author Kurt Vonnegut once broke storytelling down into six emotional arcs. These arcs define how a protagonist's fortune rises and falls, and they work because they tap into something that's innately human. We're wired to respond to shifts in fortune, whether they're good or bad, which makes these arcs incredibly effective when you're presenting data. The first two arcs move in a single direction, either up or down. The first is rags to riches, where someone starts at the bottom and rises to success. Think back to the Husted family. Every week, despite working hard, they still fall short, skipping dinner four nights a week. But then, with the help of a local food assistance program, they can finally put food on the table. The second arc is tragedy, where everything moves downward. This is the story our HR manager tells when she reveals that the company lost $430,000, the equivalent of 10 new one-year contracts. The number alone is striking, but framed in this way, it becomes something leadership can feel. It's not just a statistic, it's a loss. The next two arcs have a rise and a fall, or a fall and then a rise. Man in a hole starts with a setback, but ends with a recovery. If the company approved the time tracking feature, this is what our beloved architect Sanjay might experience, and the product manager could tell a new story. At first, Sanjay loses a promotion when he realizes he had no way to prove his work hours. It's a tough lesson. Once he has access to the great time tracking software, though, everything changes and he quickly lands his next promotion. And then there's Icarus, where success success turns into failure. Perhaps a lead designer wants to show his team how switching to a different design program can improve productivity. To do this, he shares a case study of another design team that initially thrived using their current software. And at first, everything worked perfectly. Their efficiency skyrocketed, but as their workload increased, the system couldn't keep up. Files crashed. The team missed deadlines. Clients were mad. What once seemed like a perfect solution became their biggest downfall. The last two arcs have three turns, making them more complex. Cinderella follows a rise, a fall, and then another rise. Oedipus starts with success, stumbles into hardship, recovers briefly, and then collapses completely. Why does this matter? Because data doesn't exist in isolation. It needs a structure, emotional weight, that makes people care. And the arc you choose determines how your audience feel when they walk away. Three of these arcs end in success. Why would you ever choose one that ends in failure? Because sometimes your audience needs to feel the discomfort of a problem before they take action. And sometimes the full weight of a loss is the story that needs to be told. The arc you choose isn't just about the data, it's about the impact you want to make and what happens next. Numbers alone won't make your message stick. To truly connect with your audience, you need to transform your data into a compelling story one that pulls them in and keeps them engaged. That means going beyond the surface, uncovering the deeper narrative and framing it with the right emotional arc. It means identifying your hero and your adversary, providing the right context and shaping the data into something that feels real and meaningful. Do this well and your audience won't just hear a story, they will feel it. 
And when that happens, decisions become effortless. We covered a lot about data stories today, but there is so much more here, and it is a critical skill everyone on your team should be well-versed in. If you want to dive deeper and really become effective in telling data stories, we run frequent online and in-person data story workshops, where in just a few hours, you can receive the entire framework that we use to write keynotes, sales pitches, and slide decks for the last few decades. Click on the link in the description to learn more. Until next time, thanks. Thank you.